Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and welcome back. Yes, it is High Executive Big Dave, Grand Overlord of the Frugal Mandate, and we are in the midst of a glorious time here because we have just discovered the Zakplot Mandate, our first actual intelligent spacefaring alien neighbors. So uh, it's getting crowded over here. Getting crowded over here. Hopefully uh, hopefully we're going to be able to push out our borders and uh, kind of keep them from encroaching here in our, uh, in our zone. That will be my hope. We're about to find out because our construction ship is nearly finished with our frontier outpost, which will help us to expand. Our science ship is feverishly trying to discover more unique information about this sector of space. Our first strike force is just sitting on its butt. Uh, yeah, great. So uh, before we kind of get started here, I've been uh, kind of neglecting some aspects of the game uh, and I need to sort of catch up. So let's take a look at Rick's here. So we're going to take a look at our home planet. Uh, we are, are good on stats. So we have a population of eight right now and uh, we are producing an excess of three food, which is good. You can see the other resources that we're producing here, 11 energy, 13 uh, minerals. So it's it's a pretty uh, pretty profitable endeavor that we have going here. Our fearless leader, Ray, of course, Gov, Gov Ray, Gov Ray, as he likes to be called, uh, leading us uh, at, at like a champ. All right, so let's take a look here and let's kind of explore what we want to do. So we have these 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 guys, these pop, as they're called, uh, these uh, chamberlains. They are hanging out, and uh, they're they're doing good for us because they're on tiles that have something happening. Uh, so if this guy was over here, he'd be unemployed, and he complained about being unemployed. See, he's unemployed. I got nothing to do. This is just a plot of dirt. Right, this is a plot of dirt that has a strawberry bush on it. And every few months, he picks the strawberries. He's happy. But this this is not really giving us its full potential, right? This is just one food. I think we could do better than that. You can see some of these squares already are doing much, much better because they have actual machinery, hydroponic farms. They have power plants. They have all sorts of stuff going on. So uh, we're going to build... As, as it is our, uh, our divine, well, not divine, because we're a plurocratic, we're not spiritualist. It is our uh, right as the wealthy landowners of Rix to do whatever we want with this godforsaken planet. We're going to build a farm here, which is going to give us more food. And that is excess food. But the thing about excess food is, as you can see here, surplus, surplus food will increase the growth rate of the pops. Um, so a shortage will make them unhappy. Uh, so right now, these these pops that are growing in, they'll, they'll grow in faster, uh, and maybe we'll get more pops. I don't know if it actually attracts more pops to grow or not, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that pops won't grow. Uh, or grow? Do we? Do these guys grow? I guess they grow inside of some kind of weird, funky egg. Uh, they won't grow in an area where uh, where there isn't enough food. So we have a surplus of food uh, right now, and we're about to have two more. So we're going to have five total, and that's going to be really, really nice for us. And we're going to start attracting people left and right. Or so I hope. So right now we're raking in the minerals. I'm really not doing a great job of spending, but in part that's because we had such a bummer of a starting system here. Our starting system had only one thing in it. We found this mineral rich system, but these were the only two systems in our initial footprint. So I have a surplus of minerals, which is very, very odd and feels wrong to me at this point in the game. Uh, but because of the, the bummer of a start, that's just where we are. Uh, so I'm going to use some of my excess energy credits and minerals to start clearing out. Now, I know energy is going to become a problem, so I am going to look to clear some energy tiles first. So this tile on its own produces two energy. That's before I put a power plant or anything on it. So we're going to spend 37.6 energy credits and 37.6 minerals, as well as 90 days to clear this plot. So we're going to start that process and uh, we are going to start, we have already started the process of building hydroponics here. Uh, we're good on minerals, so I'm not going to worry about building any minerals right now. Uh, what I will do is start the production of a basic science lab over here. So that science lab is going to grow in sooner or later. When that does, I will move this pop, who is not quite yet fully materialized, uh, down here. So when this blue bar fills up, this guy will actually exist and he'll start working this tile. And uh, once this is built, I'll move him down so that he's working this basic uh, science lab instead. 
And as you can see, a basic science lab gives us one of each of the research sciences that we need for our research. And that is what I have been neglecting this part of the game. I have not been uh, really paying attention to it. I've also kind of been neglecting this part of the game, but all I've really been able to do is build one ship type. So, oh, oh actually, no, you know, this is a good opportunity before we start things up uh, to check out the ship builder because we do have a new, uh, we do have a new um, component that we can add to our ships. So you have your, uh, you have your weapons up top. You have your passives down below, uh, energy cores and shields and, and armor plating. And then you have your, your sort of your tech over here. So this travels through a wormhole. So there's my wormhole modulator. Uh, basic default programming for combat. Uh, it has a basic chemical thruster, which just kind of gives it a little bit of a chance to evade in combat. And it has a basic ship mounted radar, which just gives it that sensor ring around the ship. So, in a previous episode, we researched deflector shields. So we're going to add deflector shields. So as I add deflector shield, what you'll notice is that this number over here, 7, is going to go down to 2. Because a deflector shield in a small slot requires 5 minerals to build and uses 5 power. So I had 7 power, and now I have 2. So if I actually want to build another deflector shield, I have to actually put a fusion reactor in. Fusion reactor will cost me something to build, but it won't cost me any energy. So it costs five minerals, doesn't cost any energy. Now I'm at 12, which means I can grab another deflector shield. So now this ship is effectively quite uh, more armored than it was before. You can see plus 25 shield points and uh, shields regenerate at a certain rate. Uh, we have not, uh, not researched any offensive capabilities yet so uh, that is uh, not uh, a concern at this point but we're going to go ahead and save we're going to save this ship design over the existing ship design the arrow and what that now means is that uh, any new corvette we build will have deflector shields and since these guys are just sitting around snoring we can also have them actually come back to base and upgrade and while they are back at the fleet, we will also add a few more ships so that we can get up over 100, 120 or so uh, military power because that's what we're going to need to conquer some of the challenges that are coming up. All right, we're going to start time, which will help us to quickly finish up with our construction uh, on our frontier outpost. And we can also continue to explore with the science ship. You can see that our, our new friends over here uh, the Zack plots are kind of kind of moving in on my territory here. Uh, not not really liking this. So they are here. They are surveying this planet as well, and I don't like that. We have completed research, so let's take a stop here. All right, we got our Betharian uh, power plant. This thing is amazing. It really really comes in handy, and uh, now it will allow us to discover Betharian stone. Let's go ahead and set a new research goal here. Uh, upgraded spaceport would be nice, but at this point. Um, I don't really know that it's the first priority. Uh, engineering facility turns our basic science lab into a facility that produces more engineering science and engineering research than anything else. And ion thrusters would uh, replace those chemical thrusters on our Corvettes and make them more maneuverable. Let's see, to the, to the effect of plus 10 sublight light speed and uh, plus 20 chance to evade. I don't recall this plus 10 to evade uh, with the chemical thrusters, I believe. Uh, so that's a pretty good investment, and in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. So that research is set; we are good to go there. And these uh, these guys they are surveying our planets, and I'm not really a big fan of that. This kind of like this is close enough to me that I think you should. I know they would say it's awful close to them, but hey, look who's in charge now, buddy. That's right. Now this is well within my borders. All right, so the spaceport finishes construction queue, meaning it has finished upgrading uh, the, the first strike force. There you go, fully upgraded. So, uh, yeah, so he's going to have to hightail it now out of my space. Uh, where Where is our friend here? Looks like he may have already left. Yes, like a good alien. Uh, he, he wanted to maintain peace here in our, our little uh, galactic neighborhood. Uh, so as soon as I claimed this space for my own, he went ahead and uh, headed back. 
into a Zach plot uh, space. And you can see now I have this thin, you know, this, uh oh, what's, what is it now? Okay, hey, cool, alien proto-civilization encountered. Survey of uh, Runa 2 has revealed uh, certain regions of the planet are home to primitive alien proto-civilization. Awesome. All right, they, they've mastered fire, developed a rudimentary spoken language. Excellent. So it is a very early proto-civilization, and uh, that is happening within our borders. And we found another colonizable planet. In fact, it is their planet that we could colonize. Runa 2. Oh, we've got an anomaly here. Uh, so, you know, Paseca has, has that uh, bonus. So we are definitely going to say research that for sure. So here's a problem. This is a dilemma that a leader might have from time to time. Take a sip of my apple juice before I... Uh, before I go down this philosophical road with you. So we know this planet to be home to a proto-civilization, right? It's also habitable by us. What do you do? Do you wipe out a proto-civilization in order to ha uh, habitate on their world? Or do you respect their rights to exist It's a tough call. It's a real tough call. Luckily, it's not a call we really have to make right now, but we'll get back to it. These are the things that a leader has to think about, okay? It's not easy. All right, where's our construction ship? He's right here. This is the easy stuff to think about, you know? Stuff like just building a freaking mining camp here. What do we have here? Oh, here. these are the... Uh, that's the gas grazers. Look at them. Look at them in all their glory. And they're gone. Just like that. Off to suckle from another gas giant. Right, so construction continues there. Asteroid collision. What? A large mineral rich asteroid landed on Runa 2A at some point during the previous uh, thousand years. All right. Must have been a major impact event. Abundance of minerals can now be found. Excellent. All right. So that, uh, that uh, anomaly resolved itself as a, uh, a cache of minerals. So uh, yeah, plus three minerals on uh, Runa 2A. So I know what my construction ship is about to be doing after it finishes with that. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just queue up the rest of this for us here. Uh, let's let him finish his job, and then we'll see what else we're going to queue up. Uh, so we've got completed research. That's our colony ship. All right, excellent. We can begin to expand our borders. So let's go ahead and uh, see what else that we want Gal to research here. Uh, just flat, straight up increased our borders by 20%. That is great. Naval capacity by 10%. We're barely using any of our capacity right now. Not a wise move. And uh, lifespan on our leaders plus 10 years. That's good because these guys are leveling up, right? And we want to be able to keep them around as long as we can. And uh, just straight up food plus 10. It's a tough decision. Because this is great, but it's going to take 118 months. This is a nice little shot in the arm. And it's only going to take 48. I'm going to kick myself if I pass this up. All right. I'm just going to take the 20%. Because that is, that's huge. You know, if we, if we really stop and look at that... So increasing our borders by 20%, what does that mean practically for us? It means that, uh, it means that, uh, Kazbus here is going to be in our, in our, within our borders. Kazabus, Kazabus, Kazabu, Kaz is going to be within our borders. Uh, and, and possibly, uh, Foldara, which is, which is going to be in our borders anyway, when we colonize it, uh, you know, and our borders are going to push out, uh, to maybe potentially include, uh, wild door here uh, and who, who knows what else so that's huge that really really is huge uh, to increase your borders by uh, 20 percent so uh, yeah I, I I gotta I gotta take it gotta take it so let's let's take a quick look here at the uh, who we've met so far so right now we've we've met the uh, uh, the Zach plots of course primitives my, my new buddies that uh, we we found aren't showing up you know, I think that that actually might remove the moral conundrum from this sector. 
because normally when a proto-civilization like that is found, or, or a, a, I shouldn't say a proto-civilization, like a, a, a developing civilization, like the one that's in the Iron Age or the Middle Ages or something, they actually are shown as having claimed that planet, and you, you have to make a moral decision about colonizing it. These guys apparently are so low down in their uh, evolution as a society that uh, that we're not considering them enough of a uh, enough of a, a stakeholder on Runa 2 to actually prevent colonization. So that's actually great because then I don't have to make that decision. Uh, so what I could what I could potentially do is come up here. I could colonize uh, Runa 2, then I could pop over here in into this system and I could I could get rid of this um, I could get rid of this frontier outpost which of course remember is sucking away one influence every single month uh, so that actually could be a really really good uh, a really really good move over here uh, but right now I've kind of got this area on lockdown so that's gonna sort of be a, a quick switch that I do at some point later this is still my target for my first colonization right here and uh, speaking of that Let's get in here. Let's jump into Rick's and let's jump into our spaceport and let's uh, begin construction on our colony ship. Give us something to do with those excess min minerals, which is going to be really, really good. And uh, now we can kind of pick who exactly we want to uh, put on this colony ship. Now, we don't have anything but uh, Frugalians in our uh, in our empire right now, but we have some variants in, in the Frugalians. So you can see these guys share all the traits except... These guys are individualists, and these guys are not explicitly individualists. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and send these guys because they are sort of faithful. They are uh, individualists like the rest of us. Uh, but you can see how your society starts to evolve, and it's so it's so interesting the way in which things can change and, and move uh, almost without you understanding why it's happening. Uh, but you can see there is a, a small sect within our society that has sort of shed that individualist trait and uh, may in the future develop other traits. Uh, but they are asking for an opportunity to uh, to to colonize the next world. Uh, somebody got... Uh, so, oh, it's Gal. System Gal leveled up. Complete. Awesome. Perfect. And uh, we have finished the system survey. So what's our... Okay, he's heading back. He's, he's heading back out for another survey. Great. And uh, we need to continue work with our construction ship. So let's uh, let's find him. He is he's hard at work. Awesome. Okay. So when you colonize a world, you lose anything that is orbiting that world. So if we were to put a uh, a research facility here to harvest these this uh, two uh, physics research, we would lose that when we colonize. Now I think colonization of this planet is so far off that I really don't care about that. Uh, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and add it to the queue uh, for a research station as well. And we found the star has some energy credits and Runa 3 has some minerals. So this is actually gonna turn out to be a great system for us. This is the kind of system you wanna start in. Not that barren ass thing that I started in. <laughs> All right, so we got Rick's uh, surface construction finished. Let's take a look here. So this was the stuff that I queued up in the last episode, I believe. Uh, we've got our uh, our different um, our different surface tiles now filled with actual machinery. So we've got over here, uh, we've got a, a, a basic science lab. Nobody yet to man it because this guy has not manifested yet, but this guy has. So let's switch him. So now this is being manned and it is actually producing and you can see that over here. So now Rick's is just, it is pumping out the, uh, the 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 resources for us that's amazing and in part of course thanks to Gov Ray and his uh, his bolstering of the happiness of the people and he reduces construction time and he increases uh, you know engineering output and everything he's he's a great guy really he really is I think I could see big things for him maybe you know 40 50 years when Big Dave's reign is over uh, you know maybe they're talking about uh, a, a Gov Ray uh, uh, for for uh, plurocratic oligarch kind of campaign thing I, I don't know we'll we'll see we'll see what happens colony ship is working away uh, continuing to to uh, gain influence influence you spend in different ways you spend it on leaders you spend it on uh, certain projects like you saw I had to spend a nice chunk of it on my frontier outpost and then of course the frontier outpost also requires a monthly uh, a monthly output in order to maintain it 
Uh, oh, research complete. So what do we have now? Oh, this is our this is our energy storage, which is actually going to work out nicely because we've got the Batharian power plants that are going to be coming online. So that's great. And so now we get to pick more research. Uh, just a flat, straight 5% research buff. That's going to be hard to pass up. Yeah, physics lab, no. Solar panel network would be nice to offset the cost of our space stations. But right now we only have one uh, space station. And so I'm really not sweating that three... Uh, a month for that space station. So uh, yeah, it's just going to be a flat, straight 5% buff to our research speed across the board. I like it. I like it. And as those sort of bonuses start to accumulate, it can be hard to keep up with them. And that's one of the uses of the government tab. This is a this window is something that we, we looked at in the first episode and I sort of hand waved it away. Like, don't worry about that. Uh, but here you can start to see the modifiers. So we don't have actually have any uh, empire-wide modifiers right now. But when we get that plus 5% to research speed, it'll appear here. Uh, this is potentially a good time to just mention edicts and policies. Uh, so policies kind of, they govern uh, the way that your, your empire works. For instance, uh, if you want to say uh, migration or resettlement, you know, do we want to force people to move? Do we want our government to be allowed to force people to move? Yes or no? Right now it's prohibited under the the, the combination of, of, of traits and, and sort of rules that we have as a uh, as a, 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 a plur, plurocratic oligarchy and and uh, with our different uh, traits, that's not something that we're, we're really interested in. If we were more authoritarian, you know, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, but yeah, see, so we would have to not have the individualist ethic because that, that right there makes us believe in the right of the people. So those people have a right to be on whatever planet they want. We can't tell them where to go. Um, so yeah, we have individualists, so we'll never be allowed to um, to force resettlement because of that. Sometimes it's a matter of choosing between a stance. So right now we say free migrations, whoever. If you're if you're an alien race and you want to come here, uh, great. Um, or we can say only primary species, only this, only uh, Skeksis can <laughs> can move about uh, freely, or it's just straight prohibited. You stay where you are. You're on a planet, you stay there. You, you don't like it, too bad. So this is kind of a place where you can sort of manipulate who your government is and how it, it sort of works behind the scenes. Yeah, slavery. Do you like it? Of course we don't. We're individualists, so we don't believe that any man should be forced to to work uh, with uh, against his will. And then edicts uh, can be empire-wide or, or uh, planet-wide. In this case, the empire-wide edicts will cost you one uh, influence a month, so that would tick down to plus one if I were to, to enact one, one of these. But you can see that they start to give you ways to manipulate your entire society. So you can encourage free thought. So uh, research speed will increase, but so will ethics divergences. Like you saw, we had those guys who lost the individualist trait. That's because of an ethics divergence. So you could have people within your society that lose the individualist trait, and maybe they move into uh, something that would allow them to think that slavery is, is, is actually okay. Uh, you know, some sort of an authoritarian uh, trait that would uh, radically change their ethics. Uh, that would be a, a, a bad or a potential bad outcome of enacting this edict that, uh, you know, all of a sudden your population starts to diversify in their thinking. Uh, but then you have other things like just straight up make it make research better so you can increase uh, your, your research speed on physics by 30 percent while reducing the other two by 10. Uh, but those those are your um, your edicts for the whole empire. You do you do then have planetary edicts, and they're a little more specific to the planet. A single output of influence to get these rolling, and you can do things like uh, land of opportunities. One that I really like. Uh, after you settle a new planet, if you want to attract people to migrate there, uh, this is a great way to do it. All right, let's get back on track. Had to sort of have a stop there for a little little lesson. We'll have a, a bit of apple juice here to, to cleanse the palate. And then we'll get back to the business of running an empire. This is, it's a great image. I, your, your, uh, your executive uh, overlord just taking a quick sip of apple juice before going back to the, uh, to the business of running the lives of his, uh, of his uh, peons, so to speak. Uh, don't quote me. I didn't say peons. That's not... I, I don't know where that came from. Don't make me run a propaganda campaign on you. All right, so our construction ship is here. He's plenty busy, and our science ship is uh, here, and he is uh, somewhat busy for now. So uh, I don't think we need to worry about giving them any specific uh, tasks at the moment. 
So we are just right now waiting on our colony ship. We are 60 days or so away from taking to the stars and expanding the full... I almost said Vulgarian. <laughs> the the frugali the frugalian empire uh god i'm getting choppy here this is the third one of these i've done tonight uh so all right so uh things are going well over here and uh, we are just counting down the days we've got a new system survey completed so we've got much 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 more for our uh, construction ship to do that is our colony ship finishing up before uh, that though we want to go ahead and give this guy some more systems to survey we don't want him to journey over here because we have a bit of a threat that we're going to have to figure out uh, but let's go ahead and keep him busy with three more systems to survey and then we can start looking at our colony ship so we're going to settle uh send our colony ship on its way and uh, that'll be the last thing we do for this episode uh so it's the progeny the uh colony ship that we're going to pin all our our hopes and dreams on and of course, we are heading over here to uh, Foldora. Foldora 3 is, uh, is where we're headed. And of course, once we settle here, we'll be able to grab some of these nice, rich minerals that we uh, haven't been able to access just yet. So uh, I could select a ship uh, and I could tell him to come here and colonize the planet and whatever. But, but uh, I, I much prefer the method of just grabbing the planet, taking a look at it. Oh, okay, we got a, a little bit of business to take care of here. Uh, and you can just hit colonize. So again, this is that planet that's going to be great for us. So let's go ahead and colonize. Here we go. And this colony ship is only only uh, holding this one bit of population. So the ship is going to land, and when it lands, it's going to uh, turn itself into a temporary uh, sort of capital for our for our people here. And so we need to pick where that's going to happen. One thing that you need to remember when picking this spot is that uh, as you uh, level up this and upgrade this uh, into a proper capital, it's going to provide adjacency bonuses in this cross pattern here. So this is a great place to place this. If I knew how to uh, rid this tile of the uh, wildlife, I'd probably put it here because there's innate uh, resources on all of these tiles and there's not an innate resource here. Uh, but, you know, for now, I think this is the best place. Actually, no, I take that back. This is the best place to put it uh, because then it would affect uh, something on every single adjacent tile. So, yeah, much better place to put it. You know, there we go. So that is set in motion. And uh, while that is set in motion, why don't we take a look here at what has just happened? We completed a survey. That is, of course, our uh, habitable world survey uh, that we were undertaking as we explore the different types of planets in the systems uh, that surround uh, Rick's. And we've completed that, and for completing that, we are going to get a dump of 173 of our uh, social research. And we're just going to get 116 uh, energy credits. So that's great. So I don't know if we can see this in action or not, but you can see right now over here, we have 113 out of the 600 that's needed. So let's see if we can notice that go up by 173. We didn't. So that means that it either already happened or it happens slowly. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. It's done. All right. Our colony ship is on its way. Our empire is buzzing. Our construction ship is busy. Our science ship is surveying. I can't think of anything that makes me happier. You know what might make me a little bit happier? Some Corvettes. Let's just quickly pause and double check. I, I believe we have some options now for our Corvette. Yeah, did, did we get... We are still waiting on those engines to come in. So you know what? In the meantime, I am going to go ahead and build a few Corvettes uh, just to get through that so that, that I'll have a nice strike force ready to go. Because like I said, I want to get up over 100. Uh, in my military power. So let me queue up about three Corvettes. So one thing you'll notice, and this will be the last thing I highlight before we call it here, uh, is all of a sudden I am uh, in the red on energy here. That is because my colony ship, while it's deploying, is sucking a lot of extra energy 
from my energy stores. So uh, that's perfectly normal. Nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, it is going to level itself out uh, after that ship is, uh, is, is done deploying and it becomes a proper colony and starts to support itself. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, scared because I have 803, uh, in, in my, my vault. So, uh, the, the amount of time, I, I believe it's six months or something. Uh, it's, it's not gonna, it's, it's not gonna overall effect. It's not gonna have an overall effect on the, uh, on the empire as it were. But of course, you can always check this out for a breakdown. You can see uh, where your where your stuff's going. I'm bringing in uh, 24.4, 22.45, and uh, I am sent, spending that on uh, mostly ship maintenance, but also station maintenance, building maintenance, and army maintenance. And that is leaving me at a negative, a deficit of 0.76. So yeah, not a whole lot. So yes, yeah, this is our first Frugal colony. Our colony ship is gently touched down at the top of a large flat mesa near the equator of oh we've we named this planet now it was just it was just Foldora 3 now it is called Smithius this location will serve as a, uh, the first landing site the rivers that flow in the canyon below provide easy access to fresh water ships been permanently converted to an administrative headquarters and uh, yeah with all sorts of uh, small tents and prefab shelters popping up around it's starting to feel like home Starting to feel like home. We're going to get a bonus of 60, uh, 60 uh, engineering research for uh, completing this feat of a first colony. And uh, we're going to see that colony start to uh, start to slowly show up on the map. You can see our borders have already extended to include it. But uh, this thing will this grow and big. grow uh, to at least as big, if not bigger, than this uh, circle right here. So uh, we do now have... Uh, this CAS is now in our empire, meaning we could build there if we wanted. So we'll tell our science ship once it's done with all this. Why don't you go over here and take a look at uh, CAS as well. Yep, that sounds perfect. I think it's wonderful. All right, we are building more Corvettes. We are finishing surveys left and right. We are getting an idea of our empire and where we want to press its borders more and more information being discovered as we survey more and more worlds. Let's zoom out and take a look at our empire as it exists right now, the Frugal Mandate. We stand fast with the uh, Zach plots, but uh, so far no conflict, but also no diplomacy with those guys. So why don't we make that our priority next episode? Let's reach out to the uh, Mandate, the Zach plot Mandate, and uh, let's see if they want to do business with a real Mandate in the form of the Frugal Mandate. Well, I should have paused it while I was waiting, while I was saying all that, because uh, we had a uh, research complete. So uh, let's quickly take care of this, and then we will uh, say goodbye official-like. Uh, I think it's time to upgrade our military. Uh, this would be a nice little boon, a nice little increase to minerals, but we're, we're good on minerals. We're, we are good on minerals. We've, we've had a mineral-rich set of systems that we discovered, so we're good on minerals. No reason to do this, especially when we're not even going to uh, be using armies uh, any time in the foreseeable future. The, the nano uh, uh, composite armor is great, but I would much rather have more offensive firepower. Uh, so there you have it. And we will quickly pop in here and alter our Corvette to now include the ion thrusters. So we're going from the chemical thrusters, plus 10 evade, to the ion thrusters. Additional uh, sublight speed. So we're going to move faster through sublights, uh, through uh, the faster than light travel. And we're going to be uh, plus 20 to evade now. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be great for these new arrows that we start to produce. And it's also going to be great because we'll be able to up update all of our arrows to the new design. So why don't we do the make the last thing we do, the official last thing for this video, sending these guys to upgrade. And then when we come back next time, we will continue the saga of the Flugal Mandate. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.